All right. Uh, yeah, so we'll go through some examples of graffiti and, and copyright and street art and copyright. Um, so this example here, so I want you to look at these, these two pieces. Um, on the top is an Argentinian piece done by uh, Jazz Ever and Other. It's an authorized piece, meaning they were uh, commissioned, hired to um, do this wall okay, in Argentina. Okay, so you can see that image. It's got the, the, the character with the ribbons or whatever coming out of the eyeballs. And then below is a scene from The Zero Theorem. The Zero Theorem was a film done by Terry Gilliam. Terry Gilliam's famous for uh, being part of Monty Python. And he actually, if, you ever, if you're familiar with Monty Python at all, other than the sketches, uh, they had all these kind of crude, cut-out, um, stop, uh, stop animation uh, pieces those were often done by Terry Gilliam uh, that was his style um, anyways he also directed uh, 12 monkeys amongst amongst a bunch of other uh, films um, anyways he used their artwork on a set on a film set on a studio set for the zero theorem um, and they re they re um, essentially did their own version of it and they got sued by Jazz Ever and the other. Uh, uh, Gilliam got sued. He lost. <laughs> and I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why. They ended up settling out, out of court. And the reason why is this. Their expression, fixed in a medium, creative, original, right? They have copyright on it. They, they, sh they filed for that copyright a year later. Again, it, doesn't, it does not matter. Um, the statute of li limitations for... For copyrights three years from discovery so you have three years from when you notice someone infringed on you not three years from when they published or put their work up but three years from when you noticed um, you, you you can file a lawsuit anyways so they sued they ended up settling out of court and they ended up winning now the reason why is this when you use someone else's art on a film set whether you copy it right like you do your own derivative copy of it or your own version or your own remix of it uh, or you you shoot on location where their graffiti arts in the background and it's very clear in the background and the reason why you're shooting in that location is because of the graffiti art right those are derivatives okay so as a copyright holder right as an owner of copyright you have the right to prepare derivatives which is license people the right to use your copyrighted work in another copyrighted work so when someone uses finds a piece of art and uses it pretty verbatim as a uh, as a um as the basis for designing a film set or whatever that's copyright and that's copyright infringement okay uh, you know you can't feature someone else's art sculpture uh, drawing, painting on a film set unless you license it. So the same thing for redoing someone's graffiti, uh, even your own version of it, right? Not like a verbatim copy, but doing your own version can be infringement, okay? And in this case, it, it, you know, they settle out of court in, behalf, uh, in favor of Jazz Ever and the other. Um, here's another example. This is Maya Hayek. Maya Hayek is a New York City... Uh, muralist, street artist, okay? Uh, she's pretty well known, and you can see this piece here. This is, uh, I think, in Brooklyn. Um, and uh, Maya Hayek sued quite a few people. Uh, um, you know, you can see she sued Sarah, I don't know, Bar Barrels, I don't know what the fuck her name is. Uh, sued her uh, for, you, you know, taking uh, promotional images in front of her mural, okay, and won. Uh, she sued uh, Ellie Varner and Sony in 2012 for this other um, this other mural that she did that, that you can see. But back to the back to the one at question, she sued uh, Coach for shooting this advertisement campaign in front of her mural. Now here's the deal, uh, and she won in all those instances. And in meaning, one, they settled out of court and gave her a bunch of money. Here's the deal: you can't just find art and shoot a music video or an advertising campaign or anything in front of that work without permission. 
And often, you know, that permission is a license, and a license means pay me in a contract, right? Why did Coach shoot here? Was it luck? <laughs> Was it they stumbled upon it? No, they, they saw this dope mural. They thought it would, like, be dope to shoot in front of it, and they did. They're shooting there because of the mural. That constitutes, in this instance, a derivative, right? You're using someone's actual art and you're exploiting it to add an aesthetic to your image, right? That is copyright infringement. So Maya Hayek sued and they settled out of court and she got dough. She got paid. Now, the thing with this is, is you know, they could have gotten permission from her. They could have paid a license. They could have just simply asked. You know, but they're exploiting her work to make their own, uh, to make their own aesthetic and to to make money. Essentially, it's for for profit. Uh, you know, even if that profit maybe not be be direct, you're not selling these coach ads, right? There's no value in them, but they're selling coach products and exploiting her art to do to do such. Okay, again, she was commissioned to do these walls. Uh, but it doesn't matter, you know. Um, it just makes it easier for Maya Hayek to come out and sue, and sue people for doing this. Now, here's the deal. If you're shooting, like, a documentary or something and you interview someone in front of the wall, you know, whatever, or interview a few people in front of that wall, it's likely not going to be copyright infringement, even if it's a commercial documentary. However, if you do... Um, uh, a uh, documentary on famous New York street murals, you may get sued. You, you know what I'm saying? But if it's just a random interview somebody and it, here's this place, we're here, let's, let's talk, that's, that's different. Now, if you made a piece that was critical of Maya Hayek or street artists or muralists suing uh, other artists, then you could shoot in front of it because it, you know, adds value. But if, if you know, if, it, it, you have to be exploiting the piece and then not making a comment, you know, on it. Uh, this is uh, Ahol Sniff Glue. Uh, he's a, a Florida-based artist. He's known for the, I believe it's called the Lazy Eye. You can see his work here. Now, some idiot uh, that American Eagle hired, and this is going to be an advertising company, based a whole damn campaign off of uh, Ahol's Lazy Eye. I mean, you can see here billboards, in-store, uh, magazines, print, all that stuff. Like the whole thing. Now listen, you already know this now. We're this, we're this deep into this, this discussion. That's dumb as hell. I don't even get why someone at an ad agency is so dumb to like not think this through a little bit. You know what I'm saying? On behalf of its client. American Eagle got sued. You know, uh, and um, and A Hall, you know, got that money. He settled out of court and got that paper because, you know, his works are sometimes commissioned, sometimes not. It doesn't matter. You know, this is like you build a whole ad campaign off of dude's work. It constitutes a derivative. You know what I'm saying? And it's not creative. It doesn't add any value. It's simply exploitive. It's not a fair use or anything. Uh, here's another example. Now you gotta love what these fashion fashion people, these creative fashion types do. This is Reebok Ray Steel, who sued Cavalli. Cavalli made all these expensive um, dresses, handbags, vests, etc. Now, it's actually pretty dope. Like, I love this campaign. Express yourself with bold visual impressions and eye-catching pieces. Infringe now. Well, you did, dumbass. <laughs> if you look at this image, right, this, is, this shows you actually on the dresses, it shows you the graffiti, um, the graffiti art that they just literally pulled off this wall and put onto their, their fabric. Total copyright infringement, right? To and the, the dumbest part is, if you actually look at this image, they're showing you where they actually included the artist's names in, in, the, in the fabric. Dum, 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 you know, just super, super stu stupid. This is 2014. They settled in 20, 2016. They, they got paid. And again, it doesn't matter if their work was authorized. This, in this case, I believe it was, you don't just put up burners like, like this uh, without being able to have access to that wall legally. It's, it's a pretty uh, comprehensive piece. Okay. 